All right, folks, I'm going to show you on this video uh, today how to change the front rotor on the brakes as well as the front disc pads. On this particular model, this is a 2004 Cavalier, Chevy Cavalier. It would be the same for a Pontiac Sunfire of the same uh, year. The rotor is only held on by the caliper and pad assembly. Uh, it actually forms a, a bracket when, when mounted, and the only thing actually attaching it to the spindle here are a couple of 3 8 uh, uh, bolts that go through here and we're going to remove those and we're going to pull this off and I'll show you the maintenance that you have to do and once you do that though this rotor will come right off so I'm going to go ahead and start removing these guys on the back it's going to take a bit because I cannot locate my socket today so I'm having to use this actual Allen wrench so I'm going to break the video here for a moment and we'll come back when I got these two out okay we've got these bolts uh, undone these uh, hold the caliper to the spindle frame and sometimes they get it, they, you can't get them clear enough out of the way. I use a little pair of pliers here. These happen to have a, a nylon set of teeth. And you can get in here and just kind of prise these pins out enough that you can get the, the caliper off. So at this point, it's just a matter of working it off. And what you can do is if it's a little, it's a little tight, you can use a screwdriver uh, to kind of bend this in and push the caliper uh, cylinder back to get you some clearance. Take this guy out of the way. Be careful not to twist the brake hose and damage it. And then with that out of the way, on, on these particular models, uh, the rotor just comes right off. And you know, sometimes if it's been on here a while, it may rust to the hub assembly, and you might have to come in the back and, and give it a few whacks with a, uh, a rubber mallet. Make sure it's a rubber mallet if you're planning on reusing it. Now, in this case, I'm going to actually repair, excuse me, replace this because it's been turned before, and it's gone through several sets of pads since. And at some point, these get to be too narrow to turn them again on a brake lathe. And, and it's cheaper just to get a new one. You know, a new AC Delco here is not that expensive versus 10 or 12 bucks to get this turned. But if you don't do that, it can be unsafe if you get this uh, too, too far because it's going to warp. And then it's not going to be effective at stopping the vehicle. All right, so at this point, I'm going to pull the old pads out. And I'm going to get the, the new stuff ready to, to show you what it is. And we'll walk through that, and then we'll walk through reassembling it. And as you can see, it's not, it's not that bad of a job. It's just something you can do within an hour or so, even if you've never done it before. So let me, uh, let me get those new parts and lay them out, and we'll come back. All right, so at this point, what we've done is we've, we've used a compressor here. We've pushed in the, the caliper all the way to make room for the, the, the new pads. The other thing we've done is we've pulled out the pins, and we've greased them. I'm showing you this one here. I've put on, I like to use um, Permatex Ultra, but you could also use any type of uh, brake paste or, or silicone paste. The point is that these have to be flexible and they have to be able to move in order to function properly. So we're going to put this guy back in there. And then we're going to install the new pads on this side. Now what we use on this particular model vehicle or AC Delco 1710684 be the same as a GM 1915-2705. And I've gone with this professional type of AC Delco rotor, an 18 Alp A407, which is a GM 1917-4948. Before we put this guy on, we're going to have to use some brake cleaner and, and clean it off here. So I'm going to do that. There's a protective anti-corrosion compound on here that we want to get off. Just to make this all nice and shiny. Doesn't really have to be done on the inside, but I, I do that anyway. And then we'll catch the other side here. Brake cleaner is the best chemical for this job, but if you don't have it, use some denatured alcohol. All right, I've also taken a wire brush, cleaned up some of the uh, corrosion buildup here just so that it's a little bit more cleaned up. I put the rotor back on the hub here. It's that simple. Uh, we're going to install the new pads. The inner one just snaps into the caliper's cylinder. And the outer one is going to be held on by these clamps here. Inside, there are a couple of notches built into the pad. Make sure that you see them clearly in the inspection holes here. I also like to have the um, wear indicators 
facing in opposite directions here. Just you don't have to do it, but it's a good idea. Rotate this guy around so that we don't have a, a kink in the brake line. I'm going to reposition him back on. What we're looking for here is we're looking to get this notched into the top of the spindle on both ends. It's a little tight still. Can either okay, be sorry about that. Ran out of a little bit of space. What I was saying is you want to push the caliper back onto the new rotor or the replacement rotor until you get these two notches to seat on the spindle that are part of the, the outer pad. And once you do that, uh, it's lined up to put the pin bolts back in and you can tighten those up. And again, you know, you're going to use a, a 3 8 inch Allen socket or in the case here, I'm just using an actual on a wrench. Now you could torque these down. Um, I actually don't like to because they're going to get kind of rusty. So I just get them as tight as I can by hand. That's satisfactory and, and safe as well. So now this is going to be a little loose. That's normal. What we're going to do to tighten that back up before we put the wheel on is we're going to go back inside. We're going to pump the brake a few times, you know, five, six times until we can get the pads pushed up against the rotor to hold it nice and tight. Then we'll replace the wheel, put the lug nuts back on, and, and torque those down to 100 foot-pounds, and the job is done. I hope this helps you out. Thanks again for watching.